this is the home screen of Purple Mesh. This is where we go into Purple Mesh on, and I'll show you how to get into Mini Mesh. This is just the settings. You press on that and you'll go to the settings and you can make changes to how Mini Mesh will be shown in your class. When the learner clicks on that one, they can go straight, yes, they'll go straight to Mini Mesh. They won't go to Purple Mesh. As soon as they log in, they'll go to Mini Mesh. The second option is creating a tray for every single learner. This is allowing the learner to get from Purple Mesh to Mini Mesh. So if you say yes, they can move between Purple Mesh and Mini Mesh. And press save. Those settings have made that the learners will be able to go straight into Purple Mesh automatically from the link. They will then, the default will then be Mini Mesh. They'll go straight into Mini Mesh. At the moment, it's set to be Purple Mesh. Let's see if every learner's now got their own tray. There we go. We've got all of their trays. That's Mrs. Natu's class. Look at that. And you can move with this arrow going across. Have a look at them all. So you can put work in all of these trays. The learner or you can put work into their trays, and we can extract work from those trays as well. I'd just like to revise some of those settings. So we're going to go back to Purple Mesh. And when you go back into Purple Mesh, we go to the Mini Mesh and then to the settings part of Mini Mesh. And that's where you can make changes in this little dialog box. You can even do it for a specific individual. Like here's grade 1A. If I want to do just make certain tray changes for this particular individual, I could just do it in there. Okay, so that's going to make your settings for. Mini Mesh. Let's go back to Mini Mesh, back to our classroom setting, our simulated setting. You'll have to decide what you want to call these trays. If you want to click on that, you'll see that there's the work in the trays. If you click on that little icon, that little pen, then you can make changes and you can edit to how the, what the tray is called. You might even want to give it the name of the th Sometimes you want the parents to see the children's work, so you're going to go to this section called Public. So click that checkbox and you can just copy this address and you send that to the parent and they would be able to access the children's tray and look at the work that you are sharing with them from that tray. I'm doing it with a pupil tray. So you see there's certain restrictions in terms of how what you can do with a pupil tray. It's more personal. It's where the children's work would be kept and it's highly private but if you had to click on one of the others like this one called ants it's one of the ones is not the the called a child's tray but it's it's the teacher's tray then if I clicked on that one I would be able to make the changes and share the work in that tray with somebody else I'd suggest we do a lot of planning together so that we get to share our common experience and what is the best practice I would do a lot of lessons that are engaging and using another teacher working together in pairs sharing and going through the whole process of how and what is the best practice it's quite important to use common routines use the same practice for everybody when you're working with these trays and any form of education as you already know to get that we all on the same page and the children feel that they're in a familiar environment so he has a draw a lion. So I'm just going to put this in that tray, in a, a tray. I'll just choose ants. Now press save, or I could change the name of this file, draw a lion. So I'm going to save it. Now put it into that tray. So let's see what it feels like to be a learner. I'm going to impersonate from me that learner that I did before. I'll just do it again. I'm going to go to that one. So if you want to impersonate a learner, this is what you do. You go to Purple Mesh, go to Purple Mesh. Once you're in Purple Mesh, you're going to have the administration side where you can go to admin. Impersonate learner would be over here. And here you can type in the name of the learner, F-U-N for FUNMI. F-U-N is how I spell it. And then I just wait there. His names come up, impersonate pupil. It's important to understand how the pupil would interact with Purple Mesh or Mini Mesh so that you can give guidance and assistance. Now, interacting with in this way is really important. If you impersonate a learner, you can then see how they will interact with the work that's lying in their trays and how they see the whole environment. 
It also allows you to give them more guidance when they're a little bit lost. You know the environment you're operating in. It's a structured, safe environment where the children work in a predictable way. You know, young children I know are very prone to insecurities when they operating in, in a chaotic environment. So it's very important that all teachers try work in a uniform manner, try to be systematic and get some sort of cohesiveness in that way. Just going through the work of Funmi, just looking at what's there, find the tallest is one of the activities. I gave numerous examples in our previous lesson that was on the 3rd of April and there's beta, basic data handling. We also did a number of other activities in the penguin tray. That's our little dog one. We did some card games. And you can see we're just going through all the work that the children have done. And you've even got here a test. Look, it's nine out of nine. So you can see you would be able to have a good look at that. And you could write a comment in that white block at the bottom. That's where you'd write your comment in to indicate uh, that what you thought of the child's work and that type of thing. You've got to be creative. Like in this Easter egg example, you could probably add a whole lot of dots that are teaching numeracy, groupings of docs, dots and using mathematics in an artistic way. You can go through all of them. This is the ants folder. My animal. Just refer back to that old video, the one we did on the 3rd of April. If you, There are certain things that I've covered in that which I will not be repeating. It's really important to tailor make the activities to fit the curriculum. So you'll have to go to those curriculum documents to make sure that you use those different things like all of these and you make that they are relevant to the curriculum. And that's where the curriculum would be very helpful. I indicated that in my previous video on the 3rd of April. How do we make changes to those trays? We go back to Purple Mesh and we go to in the Mini Mesh we're going to go to those settings remember that i showed you earlier on just to recap of it mini mesh and the settings was over there and that's where you set up that each child would have a tray and it also indicated that we would go by default to purple mesh uh, sorry to mini mesh we go straight to mini mesh when we log in that the children will not go to purple mesh by default and that will set all of that now, it's very important that we plan together. We get some sort of cohesiveness going. I'd even suggest that teachers do team teaching where they both share in the construction of some sort of lesson using Zoom and also using Minimash. Probably stay in Minimash for the start. The most effectiveness would be working together in some sort of team where the team itself starts generating formal systems. As I indicated before, security young kids they need a very strong structured system so you should try get that we all working on the same page impersonating the learner gives you the opportunity to see it from the learner's point of view in the literal sense so you go, need to go and often see what the learner is doing so in mini mash you just need to be familiar of what the learner is going to be experiencing when they interact with all your activities in these trays Let's pick up a piece of work from this tray, the ants tray. It's called My Animal, and it's one of the activities. And I want to show you how to put in a comment. So you click on that little icon over there, and now I'm going to type a comment. Well done. That would be equivalent to marking the children's work, and the children would be able to pick up on that, that you've written a comment in their work, which they'll pick up from these trays. These trays will provide access to work. So this is basically an empty tray and there over here if you saw that icon that would be the avatar of the learner okay and you could edit through that so i'm going to go back to purple mash i'd like to impersonate the learner learner so we're back in purple mash go to the admin section i'm going to type in fu for funmi and he should his name should come up right here Oh, Mr. Bradley, you're terrible at spelling. Look over here, all the names are wrong. So I'm just going to take the F and the U in Funmi, and then he should, his name should come up over there. There we go. Impersonate pupil. I am now Funmi. I'm going into Mini Mash. And you, did you notice that? It went straight into Mini Mash. Why did we go straight into Mini Mash? Because we made changes to that setting that when Funmi logs into 
Purple Mash or Mini Mash, by default, he's going straight into Mini Mash. He's not going to go to Purple Mash and then need to navigate to Mini Mash. It's where you want him to be starting off when he begins. It's all about getting that structured environment going. The educational environment's always got to be structured and organized so the children are on a secure basis. And that's why I was referring to working together on lesson plans, getting some sort of cohesiveness or convention going. We have to have that. The department heads and the grade heads are going to need to get together and organize groups where you all do your planning and discuss and get some sort of structure moving when you interact. That's if you want to get something really dynamic going. You're going to be able to do good things, but you're going to need to communicate and we're going to need to interact. So once the child's done an activity like I'm doing this Easter egg, it's just a matter of save, save and exit into the chosen tray. It's pretty much like the trays you'd find in a teacher's classroom. Although now in this example, I've given you a tray for each individual called my work. There you can see it. In the course of time, we'll all get to be very good at using this. It's just going to take sharing our common experience and working towards some sort of system or organization. I'd suggest even getting teachers to give feedback on certain lessons and what they did and what worked and what didn't work. Something like that needs to be going down. You obviously know that our technical department has now requested that we fill in a form indicating what technical abilities we have in terms of Wi-Fi and those sort of things. I'd urge us all to really participate in that and not take it in any serious negative way. It's just basically to get us all knowing what our abilities are so that we can kind of develop a team that works together and accommodates for the weaknesses and the strengths. So we need that sort of knowledge to be able to move on. So everyone needs to get on board with that and not be too much concerned about looking good or bad. Please check out that you've filled in that form. It's really important. All right, so there you've got all the trays again. And that's going to show you what the children are doing. And they're handing in their work and showing us their capabilities. And from that, we will intervene, extend them do some remediation, we'll kind of organize a system based on their abilities. And we're all learning how to work in a new way, so we need to do the same sort of thing with ourselves as individuals as well as a school. And those sort of skills, being able to work in this way is going to come in very useful, though its greatest challenge is going to be how you interact with the children in a very creative way and for how long this is going to go on. How long is social distancing going to take place? And for how long are we going to end up staying in lockdown? Here we have all the different tasks I've given to learners. They're called to-dos in Purple Mash. Let me just open this one. Although it's an English activity and I don't think it's going to allow you to see the work too easily, but you can comment in the side here. Whenever you open any learner's work, I'm in mark mode. I can actually write a comment. And I can even record a message if I press that red button. Record a bit of audio in here, let the learners listen to us. You can see I'd now be recording. You'll see the little volume with the green, the volume bar with a little green coloring showing the volume as I'm recording a message. But I've just done that. So you could record a message to the learners. Well done, John. You've done a marvelous job with this. And I think you're great. That'll just render the recording and the learner would then be able to pick up on this activity, grade four to seven machine learning. Okay, and you can see I've gone to the next learner. You can move through all the learners. You can even play their work, but you can see this one doesn't really work too well. It just automatically records the learner's marks in the data section of Purple Match, which, which I'm not gonna show you today. This is where all the work's kept, the to-do section. And you can see there's the address of which to do we busy with and if you click on this red icon you'll see all the blue showing what's still active all the activities that's still being done if i go on that green data sheet you can see here if i got scores it lists all the to do's you can go down into this all to these right down into the bottom if i click on that one 
it's going to show me the scores of some activity and there you can see the scores of this class they're listed down on the right hand side in green in that column that's green uh, indicating their scores for that activity so you can actually collect marks and you can even filter this as well I'm basically covering this because there's quite a few older learners and teachers who'd like to use this part of purple mesh wouldn't really advise it for grade ones and twos and you can see you can actually look and filter it down by dates i'm choosing a range of different dates between those dates two activities were done or is it three two or three activities are done in this section i'm trying to give you quite a lot of information and i know that it sounds overwhelming but slowly but surely you get to know and understand how it's done you'll always be able to find your way and you'll find that there's always something new to be able to learn. And if not, if you know everything, you'll still be able to learn how the combination of different tools works well together. Just opening up a coding activity that I did and you can see here their code blocks. If I go to the teacher section, you've got all the different stages that the learners would have gone through from the more simple one right at the top to the more complex at the bottom here we've got four stages so i go to the first one you can see that's the code blocks that were set by the learner the second one these are and the third and then the last activity you can even run the code as well and you can see in the last activity the more complex activity this is what the learner's done and here i would enter and scroll down look at it and study it and even play it and then write a comment if I play it, I'd click on that button over there and I would be able to see how their code works. Like if I click on this, you can see the on click event is bringing up uh, that the object gives a speech bubble. You'd be interacting with your Afrikaans, English and all the other subjects and writing in your comment, giving rewards and doing everything as you would like I'm doing coding here. So this is just an example to show you how you would interact with that. Look, I'm going to the next learner and you can see he's written a comment over there he's written something for me i would then read that and i could then interact with the learner as well in one of my next tutorials i'll show you how to get rid of activities when they've been done they're in green color when they turn green that means that they have already passed and the learners have already handed them in the due date is finished and then you would be able to you might not want to have those to do's all listed in blue and green you can then just send them down to the children's folder where the children can keep your comments their mark and everything but it's no longer you who's keeping it but i'll do that in another lesson you can even upload work into their folders it's going to take a lot of thought i'd suggest that we even integrate this into our iqms have some lessons that are being observed where we get a critique of our lesson and realize that it's all in the good of learning that we're only going to become better teachers if we have our colleagues looking at what we do and looking to improve where we can. I do think the whole idea behind staff development should be part of this new situation. Trying to get together and help each other, observe each other's lesson and realizing that's the way to learn. You can see as I click on these that there are certain files folders that are all linked to the activities you just got to click on them and have a look at what's inside it just takes exploration okay so here's an activity if you want to mark it you press on the mark button and there you've got two objects two monkeys which was used in the previous example on the 3rd of april it was the important thing is not to be too static in how we interact and how we develop in this new framework you've got to always be constantly revising and updating our ability to work with the technological tools if we can do that we're going to be marvelous we must have that will to learn so please do fill in that form 1d's folder has been opened and here i would upload if i go into the upload button i would be able to upload files into their folder and it'll become a shared folder you're just going to have to ascertain where you want to share it. If you want to share it with a particular individual, you go on the little, go to the individual's folder, and then you would upload the folder or the file to that learner. Remember, it just depends on how you want to use it. You've got to be versatile and you've got to understand what and how you can do it. That file is just a PowerPoint display. It was used by my daughter when she gave a presentation to the SMT, just showing them how to use Zoom. 
She's been using it for a while because she's been teaching in China for about three months now. She's enjoying it hugely. And I see they're getting over this whole coronavirus story. They seem to be winning there. And as you can see, because it's in 1D, it's been saved in 1D, that means that the whole of 1D would be able to see this Zoom tutorial, just the PowerPoint display, it's now available for all of them. Now that's obviously something I'll have to still delete, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your activities, you could read a story as an MP3, and you'd put it into that folder. I wanna show you the teacher section over there. Now this is where you're gonna find the curriculum. If I click on this at the bottom, it's early years. That's gonna be the planning for the younger learners, and here's the planning for the intermediate phase learners. And you'll see, if you scroll up and down, you'll find it, but if you click on it, it's gonna open a PDF. There's a whole lot of PDFs covering from grade one to grade six. The grade sevens, we'll have to still explain how we would use this. And you here, you would see that it's giving all the work. It's already indicating the different activities You'd have to go into your own particular learning area and study this and see where it fits in with the curriculum. In this particular instance, it's really good because with the grade fours, you can see it says term one and look, it's even giving you the weeks. So it's week one and two, and this is CAPS compliant. You're kind of seeing that it fits in with the CAPS document. So if you look at that, it's giving you some indication of the content. And here's the resources that you would use, the tool that you would use in Purple Mash to cover that content. You've got a whole range of different templates that you would use in this case. You're going to need to get to know all the different tools and how they would be used to see their appropriate usefulness. So you can see, look, it's even indicating English, mathematics, and data handling. And you're going to scroll down and you'll probably see a lot more that would be useful for you. So you've got to explore, you've got to get to know what's available and see its particular usefulness. And also to go to that curriculum document that I showed you that would help you to find what content you need to cover at this particular moment in time. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. So many of us are gonna be a bit frightened about it, but we do need to understand that this is the way to go and we can learn a huge amount and we can improve our teaching hugely. And when we return, we probably will still be able to teach better using new tools in much more creative ways. Even having parent interviews and lessons that would integrate with video conferencing tools and all these other exciting things. But once again, it's very important to make sure that we understand the need to learn and to try to extend ourselves as much as possible and not to just go for the very basics. Uh, if we go for the very basics, we're going to be like many other schools that are just uploading a PDF and it can be counterproductive if this crisis lingers. As a school, I think we should aim to come out of this crisis looking really good, showing other schools how it's done, be a model of supporting South Africa in the crisis by showing the utmost strength in our ability to teach in this new way. And it won't just come miraculously. We're going to need to set some sort of plan in and put that plan in place, have a teacher giving a lesson with others observing via Zoom. And that's where Zoom's so wonderful. You can even have remote sharing, which I will show you in, in another lesson where you can remotely work together and I can click on your screen to show you how to do things. And that's going to take it to a whole new level. And we're going to need JP and all these other people to assist us to be able to get that on board. So please do fill in his form.